Hi, welcome to the Sankofa Pan African series. Today we are celebrating another African legend, Queen Nani of the Jamaican Maroons. Um, if you have not yet subscribed to our channel, please take a moment uh, to do so. Thank you. Now, we're celebrating a woman whose life and legacies have almost been completely left out of written history. However, I'm a person whose academic life has focused so much on the importance of oral, oral history, oral tradition, or call it what you may. I therefore recognize and acknowledge Nani of Jamaica as a historical figure worthy of note. Now, we know very little about uh, precisely when and where she was born, but her proper name, which has been reported as Nanani, has been identified as coming from the Akan, a Ghanaian ethnic group. Now, Nanani has been translated um, to mean mother or ancestress. It is widely believed that um, she was born in Africa and then transported to Jamaica uh, during the transatlantic uh, slave trade. Some accounts say that she was married to a man named Kojo. Um, others say her husband's name was Edu. For me, the important thing to remember are the pivotal roles that she played in the liberation of her community in Jamaica, which are legendary. And that is why she's remembered as Queen Nani of the Jamaican Maroons. Before we go on, let me quickly, uh, briefly talk a bit about the Maroons. From very early when they were introduced into the New World, enslaved Africans um, started escaping from their Spanish captors. Some either joined indigenous people while others... Um, or set up communities of their own in the woods or forests. Um, some chose mountainous areas to set up their settlements. Now, the communities which they formed were called maroon because they were kind of a secluded, you know, from um, outsiders. The word is derived from the Spanish word uh, Cimarron, which means runaway slaves um, who hide in forests. Some of the communities which um, the escaped uh, people formed were so well established that even Francis Drake um, enlisted several Maroons during his raids on the Spanish when the British and the, the Spanish were struggling over territories in the New World. So Maroons were known for their bravery. Most of them were, were warriors. Now, the communities that the, the Maroons created had to contend with great difficulties just to survive. And the white colonists did not make life any easier for them. And they often tried to starve them into extinction by cutting off their food supplies where possible. Against all odds, a number of um, these maroon communities um, survived through farming, crops, and hunting. Some even managed to grow their population by assimilating more black uh, people who escaped from plantations. They were very protective of their autonomy and would even go and raid plantations and harass planters, thereby instilling great fear in the in the planters who dreaded a massive revolt of the enslaved uh, people there were maroon communities in places like haiti whose leaders spearheaded the six-year rebellion against the white plantation owners that preceded the haitian um, revolution there were other maroon communities in cuba and puerto rico and in many other places such as St. Vincent, um, Dominica, Guyana, Panama, 
Suriname and Colombia. There were others also in, in Mexico and um, from the uh, Amazon River Basin to the southern United States, primarily around the Florida and the Carolinas. Unfortunately, most of the early Maroon communities were vanquished and by 1700, most of them had disappeared from the smaller islands. Back to Nani. In Jamaica, Maroon establishments made up of escaped Africans are believed to have um, existed from as early as uh, 1655. And by the 16th century, Nani Town, named for the legendary woman that we're celebrating today, and other villages began to fight for independent recognition. The Jamaican Maroons thrived because their environment was not easily accessible from the outside, and their isolation allowed them to remain autonomous, and they became a major threat to the British. Beginning in the 17th century, Jamaican Maroons fought British colonists and eventually forced them to sign treaties that effectively freed the Maroons a century before the Slavery Abolition Act uh, of um, 1833. To some people, this shadowy character, Nani, popularly known as Nani of the Maroons, was an obey woman with supernatural uh, powers, which allowed her to stop bullets using her buttocks. <laughs> um, there are also stories of how, after only a few days of planting them, her pumpkin seeds sprouted miraculously to feed her starving people. However, there is enough evidence of her contributions to the maroon resistance in Jamaican history. What cannot be disputed about her is that she led a guerrilla warfare between 1724 and 1739 to defeat the British. Under her leadership, Maroon communities in Jamaica united and negotiated successfully with the British for land. This led to a treaty which was signed in 1739. Unfortunately, her original base, Nanny Town, was destroyed by the British and replaced by Moore Town or New Nanny Town. Nanny is believed to have died around 1750. Thank you for watching this episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share our videos. See you next time.